Oh shit, that's sick. This is one studio. Let's let's check out let's check out the other studio. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if the wife can handle studio. this. Shout out to my boy studios, Egyptian Love. Huh? Uh three. Three studios. Yes. Oh wow. this is anybody ever seen that right there? Oh yeah, dude. Oh shit, he didn't. Kill a killer killerkellerofficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials 2019 is their 20th anniversary year join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999 Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. See what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Killer Keller Podcast reporting to you live and direct central London, or as central as you need to be. And uh, with the uh, current technological uh, phenomena that is Zoom, we are going direct to San Francisco. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings, by the way. We have a good friend of mine who I've known for ever and i've been a fan for even longer uh the king of the turntables unquestionable pioneer um rock study too i believe am i right yeah you talking about me yeah yes definitely rock city crew shout me out to crazy too. legs ken swift that's me too so we're two two rock studians we are about to get into it dj cuba inside the place what are you saying my brother my man my man my man, Killer Killer, what's up? Do a beatbox right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's on demand, man. You know what I mean? It's, you know. I bet you're the same, aren't you? I mean, there must be enough people that hit you up and they're like, yeah, yo, yo, give us a cut. Give us that cut. Give us that scratch. Uh, yeah, the nerds. I, I, I do the same to my homies that scratch. What's the new Dude. scratch? What's the, latest? What's the latest? What are you working on? We're so nerdy about it. For real, I yeah. mean, yeah, it's infectious, isn't it? I mean, there's a habitual thing to both of these disciplines, right? Yeah, it's just, yeah, we love it. It's just, you know, it's, we're just born to, to do this shit, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> How long's it been? How long have you been doing it for? Ooh, 1985. Boy, that's about as long as I've been beatboxing, to be fair. Well, well how, when did you start? Uh, well, I started when I was like seven or eight years old as a kid. What year was that? Uh, easily like 84, 85. 83, oh, yeah, maybe. That- so there was some special thing around that time. I don't know what, 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 like a portal opened on the planet. What the hell around that time? Just beamed like, you know, like, like Power Rangers. Like all of a sudden you are, you have the gift of scratch. You have the gift of beatbox, you know? Gosh. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. It's a, like a, for, for my album, it's kind of like a movie. So I might, I might incorporate something in the, in the movie, like with that theme of uh, beaming the knowledge into people at, at a certain time or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. That's so sick. You've always been, in my mind, like the, the the kind of character that you right. You guys, particularly back in the day with Scratch Pickles and the mixtapes you used to do, you were like the kind of the the, the jackass format, the four one one um skate video format. You were like the equivocal in Scratch DJ. Uh, the weird thing is the jackass guys uh, told us that uh, hey, we used to watch your videos before Jackass came out. So I was like, what? That's wow. weird. Yeah. yeah, it was like a video magazine, an audio magazine as well. Like you guys used to really embrace the cut and paste before, you know. What I mean, Bef- before that was really the done thing. I mean, uh, that that was the whole uh, term, that whole uh, dirt style term of just doing it raw and you know just getting yeah. the getting the goods from the rawness. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, we like you've got a legacy to kill for, man. Like, and that's what creates that cultural. Uh, the, the, the 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 relevance of it all isn't it the fact that you went that kind of li- that beyond the the point of being all so official you were kind of like having fun with it and you it you just got the impression that you'd just be doing this anyway you know what i mean yeah i mean it's either that or or being a a, a cubicle and work for somebody else for the rest of your life and then freaking die right after that and yeah. hell no i want to i want to have a good time while i'm do you here. ever think I about that time. all the time i'm just like you know, it's just like it's a it's a blessing to do what you love and to help people with uh, with your skills. And it's like crazy. It's like when you when you choose that route, the universe kind of helps you. It's tough at first, but 
you know, it's, it's better than being at, at something where you become a slave and, and you're working for the dollar or the, well, what do you guys got at the, the, the pound? Yeah. Pound. We got the pound still. Yeah. yeah so it's like, uh, it's like the, the money is an illusion of, of fear. And so if you choose the loving route, which is uh, using your skills to make heaven on earth as best as you can, then it's like everything just works out for some reason. It's really crazy. Bro, I couldn't agree with you more. Like sometimes <laughs> you just said something that really resonated with me. You said that, you know, you, you're given this skill. It doesn't necessarily mean you know how to navigate with it. It's actually, it's a gift from somewhere. And to, to be able to say, oh yeah, you just do that and you, you know, A, B, C, D, you know, and it's and it just plays out the way it doesn't work like that. You've got to really kind of figure shit out, haven't you? I, even till now, I'm still learning. It's a, it's the craziest thing. It's like it's it's it never. If you if you stay at a plateau and you don't go to the next, it, it can it can fall apart. You got to keep on. You know, you can enjoy your plateau for a while, but you got to like, like after a couple of days, you got to all right, let's take it to the next or whatever. You got to keep on moving. It's it's never ending. It's yeah. that's the beauty about it. Infinity. For sure. It's kind of seasonal, isn't it? It's like everyone has their time in the sun. Uh, yeah, you, you got you got that time in your sun and then you got to go back, you know, in out of the sun and make something. So you got to go back to get back in the sun again. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. like a it's like it's like waves, right? You got your ups and downs, ups and downs. Right? You got your like good days and bad days, good days mm -hmm. and bad days. And same with your career. You got you got your highlights in your career and then you got your dark points and then got your highlights again but mm. when you when you're in that dark part that's when you when you got to train and, and be that samurai sharpening the sword dude actually that's really interesting like I, I like the idea of having like two rotating platforms like there's one which is your daily you know i'm gonna practice i'm gonna do this i'm gonna better myself in a real athletic kind of way and then there's the other platform that's constantly rotating which is your career and that that's that's almost like a cycle around the sun right yeah yeah it, it's it's like you said, it's seasonal. I mean, that's nature, right? Nature has, has its cycles. And, but if you stay in one part of the cycle and you don't progress and it, it kind of falls apart, you got you to gotta go with it. The good and the bad, the good and the bad, the good and the bad. It just, mm -hmm. It's a constant spiral of, of, of blossoming like, yeah, a, that's like a plant does. You know? yeah. um, all right, cool. So on that note, then two questions. What has been the, what has been the consistent in your career that has jump-started your time in the sun i think i think training training is is like a, uh you know you're scratching you're having a good time you're flowing it's all good and then you got the the down day where it's like oh, i'm not flowing today that's the day when you work on your skills so you're mm -hmm. trying to like okay this the one click here goes to the upside down reverse frog butt hair scratch and then you got to do all this complicated then the next day you're flowing again oh cool i'm flowing and then the next the other day it's like Oh, damn, I'm not fluent. So then you work on your, your little skills. So it's like, once again, it's a wave. So the whole, sh whole thing is, it's like my album, the wave, wave twisters. Mm. Oh, we're definitely going to come onto that. All right. Well, so what's the negative side? So when you're in a, when you're in a low point, I mean, you have kind of briefly mentioned it, but in a career sense, what's been, how have you, how have you dealt with the lows in, okay, you've had a bad day. There's absolutely, your turntables are broken. Your, your turntables are broken, Q. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, so so there's always a positive. Uh, if, if my, uh, I remember one time my um, my hand, I was doing some martial arts and, and I got I got hit in the hand. I couldn't use my fader hand. And so oh. I was like, oh man, how can I turn this into a positive? And so I just worked with one hand and then I kind of developed uh, my free hand scratching with no fader. And so there's always a positive to, to everything that the, the universe throws at you that's negative. If there's some kind of blessing in it, just like this whole COVID thing, yeah. I stayed indoors and finished my album. Yeah, for real. So always you're some, some tiny Iomin shit there where you lose your hand and you just make something else, you know, some Black Sabbath shit right there, bro. Yeah, I, I, I saw a TV show one time, this this one boxer, uh, he, he had his hand tied behind his back and... And, and then he had, he was, uh, I think he was right-handed. And so they, they tied his right hand behind the back and he developed his left hand. So I was like, all right, that's what, that's what we got to do in these weird situations. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah. And like you say, you know, it's a very strange situation we're in, you know, particularly for, for you guys over there, there's a lot more restrictions going on still. We're kind of loosening up over here, but um, you've had the chance to do this album and you're, you're building the, the structure. You got the first half done, right? The whole thing is done now, but you can listen to the first half uh, it, uh, on thebrumble.com. So what it is, it's a, 
we have I have a new album and it's a double album which is uh, 18 tracks and you can right. hear hear nine of them for free on um, DJCuber.com. But there's also going to be a separate bonus album with uh, six extra bonus tracks in little seven inches. So if you buy the deluxe pack, that comes with it. So that's 24 tracks total. Wow, Jesus Christ! Yeah, and what's dope about it is uh, every every track is a character in the Wave Twisters movie. If you haven't seen the Wave Twisters movie, uh, go check it out. And oh, it's, go check uh, out Wave Twist. Jesus Christ, boy! Um, yeah, and it's, uh, every every character uh, is a track, and it's the prequel to Wave Twisters. So it's what they were when they were younger. So it's Wave Twisters Zero instead of Wave Twisters Two now. This is like some like going through the archives of some Star Wars trilogy business. You're going backwards to go forwards, that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the past, how they came to be. That's amazing. Where'd you get your creative ideas from? I mean, they're, they're, I've always wanted to ask you that. Where the fuck do you get your creative ideas from? Uh, everywhere, everywhere. You know, you, I, I walk around, I hike a lot. So I, I'll uh, look at nature and I'll be like, wow, look at that flower. The way the, way the petals are, uh, are going this way, that's like, oh, that could be a scratch like that. And then, for some reason, that flower has three flowers orbiting it, little ones. I was like, what? Oh, that's cool. So then yeah, I could put like some weird little miniature scratches around that big scratch. You know, and I'll, I'll just come up with stuff because of nature. That Usually that's what happens. Or I'll like listen to somebody like you who's amazing and I'll, I'll be like, oh, that's a good pattern. I'm going to try that with scratching. You know, every single thing is going to influence me. I'm always looking for that. How can I turn this into scratching? Yeah, every for sure. Ooh, even food, like, oh, combine, uh, what's this now? Combine, like, uh, Kobe beef with uh, with uh, ciabatta or whatever. And it's like, oh, that, that could be a scratch. And that's a scratch. How would those two sound together? And what would they make? You know, it's like just, the, mm. just that's just how my, my, my mind works. I'm, like, looking at equations on how can I turn every single object on the planet into scratching or a thought into scratching. It's just, I, I just think like that. I'm, I'm just a I, matrix. I, I get it. I get it. But, um, you're deconstructing. And you're reassembling. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. I love that. That's right. Yeah. So you'll look Here's at easy. something and you'll break it down to its to its to to its basics, and then you reconstruct it into your own shit. That, yeah, that's what I do. I, I love it. Yeah, exactly. I like that the way you just broke it down like that. Wow. Um, reconstructing and, and constructing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, you can have that one for real. You know, thank you, thank you. Whatever helps you, the, you know what I mean? Because uh, listen, every I'll, I'll every pound in the mail. Say again. Oh yeah, I'll virtual pound, pound, virtual pound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember the first time I ever saw you. Uh, I knew the mixtapes before. Um, it was Fresh ninety seven. Oh yes, yes, I remember that. Mix master Mike and Shortcut came along, and yeah. they killed it at the show, and I was amazing. That was a great show, bro. You three together, you did the clams of death. That one routine, I can't thank you enough. It changed my life. That whole, what you guys did on that one stage, it changed my life. It made me think differently about beatboxing. Really? Like like how? Because um, I'd never come across, uh, first of all, it was like turntables as instruments, you know, it kind of set fire in the UK. That was the first time loads of people saw this thing happen. And I remember, you know, I was speaking to Mr. Thing and Tony Vegas and whatnot, and they all said, like, directly after they saw you guys at that show, they knew that you guys were just going to go back home to America. But this fire had already been set alight, so they were like, yo, like, we have to step up and do something. Or You know what I mean? This is a movement. This is This thing's a movement. And... I felt that too. I was like, yo, like this is, this is changes everything over here. Yeah. And those guys are geniuses, man. Those are the homies. They, they can, yeah. they can shred yeah. like no other, man. Those guys are amazing. Do you, do you kick it with them still? Um, yeah, dude, they come through. <laughs> they come around and we talk. Oh, you tell them I said, what's up? Those are the homies, man. Super intelligent and, and brilliant. Like very original. And I love those guys. Amazing. Yeah. Do you remember the Euro scratch? <laughs> Rob Euro came up with that Euro scratch thing with the, um, with the up fader and the cross fader, do you remember that one? Yeah, everyone went crazy when they when they busted out with that. Those guys are amazing, like super geniuses. Like, yeah, yeah. They, they better not stop. I'll get I'll get mad if they stop, man. Because those guys, they got to keep developing their shit. Same with you. You got to keep developing your shit, man. You're so you're such a genius, man. Oh, brother. You know what? I'm I'm still like I have these um days where 
I'll have like an outburst of like loads of ideas and I'll start beatboxing around the house. And then there's like, yeah. there could be weeks where it's just like, yeah, I'll just, cause you know, when you own a style, it's like you want to go forward with it, but you want to progress it in your style. That's the hard yeah, yeah. bit. It's actually uh, easier because you can do it like no other, because you have your own fingerprint, you have your own signature, no matter what you do, it's going to sound different from everyone else. So just keep developing that. And you got, you have to recognize your, your uniqueness and uh, sometimes you sometimes you know you get in that rut like oh man it's like you know I, I, I can't do it but you could because you have a different signature and you got it you got it. no matter what they, nobody can copy your signature and the same with your beatbox you're gonna sound different from everyone else regardless so might as well keep developing that no, I appreciate you saying that. I really appreciate going for fucking Cuba. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go practice in like about that night like tomorrow. No one, no one can do it like you. No one can do it like you. And people have to embrace their uniqueness and and just do it. You know, don't. You know, like I said, yeah, I I, I get in ruts and I'm like, oh man, I'm freaking, it's not sounding right, but it is to other people because you sound different. But you gotta realize that. That's all. Yeah, sometimes we all take it, we take it, you know, we, we, we break a few ribs and suck ourselves off a little bit too much about things that are really like straightforward. If you just treat it like another day in the gym and you're just trying shit out, if you repeat a pattern and it's all good, you're just doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep on, keep on. It's like a flower, right? You're going to, like, maybe two flowers will grow up to kind of look alike, but after a while, this one kind of goes like that and this one kind of goes like that. They're going to be different. So it's like, yeah. whatever, keep on developing it. Yes, for, for <laughs> you, uh, you, you kind of briefly kind of talked a minute ago about the, the threads and the conversations that you have with people. Do you, um, do you recognize, do you recognize your contribution to DJing and how, like, you, you've got such a huge cult following and you're, 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 you're the goat, right? So, do you recognize? I ask this only because, like, does Dave Grohl really have a Nirvana? in his record collection. What's his Nirvana? Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking like, do you, you obviously have your equivocals of what your, your Cuba is, but like, do you realize the cultural impact that you've made? Uh, yeah, a little bit here and there, but I, I swear to God, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on that because um, like I said, if you dwell on that, you're going to be like, it might, it, it could get you a, uh, how you call it? Um, some people could get, oh yeah, yeah. I did this and that. I, I don't need to do anything for yeah. the rest of my life. And that stops the development. And so you got to, you have to be like a, um, a chef that serves uh, great new dishes every time, or else it's going to be like, oh, he did the same shit last time. And you don't want that because I've seen a lot of, a lot of my favorite uh, heroes, they just bust out the same shit. I'm like, uh, I don't want to do that. So I want to be a, a little different and keep on developing. And so every time I, I bust out with something, there's like. Oh, did you notice that? Oh, I didn't hear that before. Oh, wow, it's a little different. You know, I want that. And that's my, that's the goal is to be uh, like fresh all the time. Speaking of mm. fresh, 97. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit tougher, but it's a 1 million times more rewarding to be in that headspace of giving that's new right. things. And it, it keeps longevity going as well too, doesn't it? Yeah, and it doesn't get boring. It's like, oh, okay, you're doing the same shit again. It's like, come on, get the fuck out of here. You know, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like... I want to see some new fucking, I want to see the motherfucking, the next knockout, bam, like, an, oh, damn, you knocked him out with a fucking, with a toenail, some shit, like, whoa, that, that was different. <laughs> um, where did it all begin, brother? When did, like, when did, because I know this is going to be, right, we're going to go into some basic qu question and answer type of things now, but there, there's certainly a backstory that my, my crowd, my audience would probably would love to hear. How did it all begin? And like, where, where did, where did it suddenly become super serious? Ooh, uh, it began because uh, um, I think Rapper's Delight or Kraftwerk, maybe like, uh, uh, and all, all the popping. There was a lot, of, a lot of strutters in, in San Francisco. All fucking poppers around here, and that was like '82, maybe. And then, then uh, Rapper's Delight came out in 1978. That whole yep. sound, uh, or um, Sugar Hill Gang, all that stuff. And I, as a little yep. kid. I, Damn, what is this? This is amazing, but I'm not, I'm never gonna be involved in it. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be a a, a DJ or a rapper or into hip hop. But I, I love it. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of I started messing with it. My friend was like, "Try it, try it." I'm like, "I don't want to." And then he goes, "No, go ahead." And I'm like, all right, all right. And I was like, "Oh shit, that's pretty fun." So it just became a, a, a just a, like a little side hobby. But I loved it so much. I want to do it again. 
And uh, that was just kind of, you know, uh, being a little kid at 15 years old, uh, just fooling around. And, and then, uh, wow. and then my mom, luckily for me, my mom was a uh, valedictorian in high school, valedictorian in college. And she moved all the way from Philippines, all the way to America. And she became the queen of recruiting for the whole United States of America for Mary Kay Cosmetics four years in a row. Wow. The queen of recruiting. And so she was all about playing all these uh, uh, self-help tapes. Like, you know, uh, you ever heard of Anthony Robbins, of course? Um, uh, yes, yes. I've, yeah, I've heard it in like rap and stuff, yeah. Yeah, he's like the guy that's like, uh, you can do it. You can do anything. That's you, right. You know, God is within you. You can, you, you have, God has blessed you. You, you, God is working through you. You can do anything, whatever you uh -huh. want to do. You can make the world. I was like, I was, all that stuff was going into my head I was, as I was um, driving to school to uh, take a nap in the park and, and not even go to school. And I was listening to that and I was like, oh shit, you can do whatever you want. All right, cool. Now I'm going to do my little kid hobby. And then I'm going to do it. Fun. And then, so, so the two's, who's your friend? What was his name? We got to give him props. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Ruberic Perez. He was a Big little b boy. Ruberic Perez all yeah, day. He was a 14 year old little b boy. And, and all my friends were into hip hop, but we weren't, they were all breakdancing. Everybody was breaking. And I, I was a b boy too, but I sucked so bad. And <laughs> but luckily he said, he said, Hey, look at this. And I, I tried it. And that was, that was it. You know, there's like always an expectation. This fucking thing here, everyone thinks that you break dance, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm Roxy Crew, but no way am I a b boy. But I am a b boy. But I'm, I'm a b boy with my hands. Yeah, and a b boy with my mouth. That's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So when did you? When did you suddenly? Because uh, you know, it would have gone from naught to sixty pretty quickly once you turned sixteen, and you were just on it. Like, did, was there any other? Was there any other DJs in the Frisco area? Because like that that area, that West Coast. I don't know. It's got some magic to it. It's got something, and it. You know the Amoeba Records, the the gay scene, the hippie scene, the it, the, the music scene itself. It's crazy over there, bro. There must have been like a handful of people that were thinking the same way as you, right? Oh uh, well, see, San Francisco is so diverse. It's like a, it's like a little square, seven seven miles by seven miles. How much is a mile in in, in uh out there in the uh, UK? I think it's, I, I, listen. Comments below, guys. I think it's ten kilometers or something. Yeah, it's like it's a really small city. It's that big, and then. Within that little ass city is every freaking nationality possible. So there's like no racism. There's like, there's like you said, there's transsexuals, there's gay people, there's white people, black people, Asian, there's like alligators, there's reptilians, there's every freaking nationality here. It's like <laughs> crazy, there's robots, you name it. And so, um, and so we're, you know, we're full of, of culture and stuff. Uh, I'm sure it's like that in London too, right? There's just crazy. everybody, there, every freaking nationality is there. So you, you yeah, just learn crazy. so much faster with all, all these people there. And, um, yeah. Uh, Mixmaster Mike, my partner, started like a, a few months, maybe a half a year before me, and he was so ahead of everyone. And I was like, God damn, luckily that spiritual being was in my life in the in the get-go. And he kind of like was like, yo, Q, the secret to it, be original. Make up your own rules. And from there, I was like, all right, that's that's the rules. I'm going to make up my own rules. That's it. Make your own fucking rules. Smash it. My boy, Mixmaster Mike, he's the, the DJ for the Beast Boys and all these guys. And... In Hollywood, that guy's huge right now. Love that guy. He's a beast, man. He's a beast. He's a, he's a playful beast. Like that's the thing with you guys. It never feels like it's um. It, there's a pressure. It never feels like there's a struggle. It feels like uh, you're like like water, my friend. You know what I mean? It is. It is. It's just like Bruce Lee said. There's there's no style. It's just you make you make it in whatever. You, there is there's no form. And, you know, it's like what any direction you want to go. How how deep did you go into this? I remember seeing you uh, do a performance at DMC. I mean, you've got countless DMCs, right? But when I first when I was a kid, I think it was DMC 96, I think 95, 96. Noise was there. Rock Raider won. You and Mike were doing your thing. That was my first ever seeing of you guys. Um, mm. And I oh, just felt... Oh, that was a don't, don't, don't count that as... That's a freestyle. We, we, had, we had no routine or... I think Mixmaster Mike tore it up. I was like... But if you watch the video, they edited uh, a lot of my part out. But I'm glad they did because it sucked anyway. I just felt like I thought you were like super elusive because every time you touched the fucking thing, it was like, Jesus Christ, what the hell happened? I was just, my mind was blind. Like, so what? So they edited you out because you weren't happy with what you were doing? No, no, I just, I, I, I think because it just sucked. And, and so uh, I was, you know, still kind of like finding myself a little bit. 
mm. uh, in, in that point. But I don't know. I'm glad they edited it out because I, I remember thinking back like, oh, my God, what I did, I sucked. And then when I looked back at the videotape, you could hear the beat. It gets chopped. And I was like, oh, good. That I was terrible there. <laughs> Mate, the amount, the amount of absolute shit shows I've had, you know, where I've had to call up DMC, and I'm like, yeah, listen, you know that bit, that bit. <laughs> <You're> in... <laughs> Let's not have that one on the video, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, those, those are great, great learning lessons. They they pump you up like, oh hell no, I do not want to do that again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice my ass off. And so those, those yeah. are those are great stepping stones, actually. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. You're literally stepping into an arena full of people that are essentially the choir <clears throat> and you're singing your loudest to the choir. You, you got it. You got to come correct in those scenarios, right? It, it, it's the, it's the core audience. It's the DJ world, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a battle, you know, it's a, it's a fun little competition. So, you know, you want to always come with the stuff that's like, Hey dude, rewind that man or play that again. I want to see that again. How the hell do they do that? I like, I like it. Uh, it's like a magic trick, right? You want to see yeah. a, Good magic trickings. How do you do that? You know, and I like that feeling. Exactly. If, but you can pull that off. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a magic trick, and there's a science behind the magic trick. It, it's a bit of that, isn't it? It's like it's all those things that once you unlock certain keys, then other tr other tricks suddenly fall into. Oh, now I get it. It's like that. I love it. I love it. Yes, it's like. Um, it's like you develop, oh, you got to make it sing. Oh, you got to work on your rhythms. Oh, you got um, to make it flow. Oh, it's like rapping. You know, like scratching is like you're an MC. Uh, oh, oh, it's a dance. The, the sound is dancing. Oh, it's a sculpture in your mind. There's so many yeah. aspects to, to music. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's like yeah. a musician is almost the same word as magician. Ooh. Oh, you did it. <laughs> That's fire. That's sick. I know that, dude. Right, so look. it might be the same word. You know how like language is translated differently. It might be the same word because the trick, the trick of captivating a crowd, is one and the same. I like that. I like it. You're right. You've never been uh, backward about coming forward when it comes to technology. Now, have you got this new album, and it sounds like that there's there's a real narrative to it. It's a concept album. It runs in keeping with the theme the theme throughout your career um with technology being the way uh it's become for everybody i've often felt like the winners are the skateboarders the beatboxers the djs the graffiti writers the people that do things because they they're passionate about it and they they embrace that stuff and you've always been quick to embrace haven't you yeah i mean you know it's like uh you know there's there's um Technology makes, makes things a lot easier, you know, like some people could be against it and some people could be for it. And there's some people that are for the old way and the new way, which is me. I like, I like to use, um, I like to play, play guitar and I like to use electric guitar. And then you got MIDI guitar and you get scratch guitar. And, you know, there's so many different, uh, toys to play with now, rather than be like, rather than, than being a hater, like, oh man, uh, you know, forget matches. Let's, uh, let's rub two sticks together. That's the real way. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, let's take it right back let's go naive style or some shit um how much you uh, how much you get into that uh, kind of portable scratch world at the moment because that seems to be like really picking up yeah i want to give a shot to a uh, reloop they um they have this really dope turntable it's like i'm uh there's this thing called long time ago called a qfo which is a turntable and a fader on it and so they right. kind of got very close to that uh, idea it's, it's called the reloop uh, spin i believe it's a little portable turntable Right and, and put a fader on it, so you can go anywhere and scratch it. I love it. It's it's so cool, and, and just that world is is developing as well too. It just keeps getting better and better, and we make. Just, um, it's it's, you know, it's crazy. Back. Yeah, I it's love like it. really changing the. It's 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 get. I think it's getting um, it's, it's bringing the fun back into it, isn't it? Yeah, it's like if you want to, uh, like I'm over here at, at the studio, and like you know, I want to go outside. I want to go. It's, it's really sunny outside. I'm gonna go to the beach, and boom, you can do it with the. With your uh, little portable. With the acoustic so. version. <laughs> what was that? With like the acoustic version of a guitar, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you see guys playing flutes out there, having a good time in the park. Why can't we? So, you know, now now we could. I love it. I love it. Um, Yeah, the, 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 I, I often say this actually, you know, that restriction creativity side of things, which was, was very much what ITF and DMC and Table Turns, they were all about. It was like, 
so the two turntables and a mixer, and that created some of the most advancing uh, styles and techniques. Now, with the technology being the way it is, it, it's flipped on its head a lot more, um, and it's all about uh, music policy, like um, selector, what you're providing as a within the the, the the technology. But it's it's quite music driven now, like. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the the, te- the the scratching and stuff like that will always be impressive. But with all the equipment that's there, often it's like it really does boil down to, you know, what the music's saying, right? It's, it's up to you. It's, it's, um, beauty is in the ear of the beholder. <clears throat> so it's like some guy might like this, some guy might like that. You can't please everybody. Some guy might like it a certain way. And, mm-hmm. you know, I like what you just said. Uh, what if it was beautiful music and beautiful scratching together? I think that would yeah. be a really good formula. That'd be sick. Do you ever feel like that the, um, people, because there certainly <coughs> was a time, and you and me can certainly relate to this, right? Um, to put beatboxing on record, I, I, had the, I had the task in my head of, of somehow, when you're on stage, you're, you're going super industrious, you're making yourself non-human you want to show people that you can do more than two or three sounds at once and you can hold a crowd on your own when when you put it onto record it's almost like you've got to go more human because people can't see you you've got to almost like be almost like over you're almost bobby mcferrin like you know what i mean did you find that with scratching how did did it ever cross your mind about how to translate that in a particular way to record uh, sure uh like the nerdy guys will get it you don't have to say a story to them but the, for me, I like to add a little kind of hip hop twist to it. So I make a story. So the, and like I said, in the album, every song is a character and each, each song has a certain particular, certain scratch style or yeah. certain, the beat is, or uh, pertains to that certain character's personality. So that is a story in itself. Uh, so I, yeah, 24 stories I got to make a, a deadline is coming up because we got to release that album now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah, it's a, uh, speaking of story, uh, or <clears throat> we can go all the way backwards to the nerdy guys. How do you tell a story with scratching? And so it's, um, there's different ways of doing that. I mean, my, my friend said a great, uh, um, <clears throat> great help thing. He said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not COVID or whatever. Um, <laughs> hold uh, tight, hold tight. Yeah. Quick, quick, someone get this guy an ambulance. He's got COVID. Fucking Cuban, <laughs> man. <laughs> Sort this guy. I'm in line with him now, man. Help him. <laughs> <laughs> he said it in the box. Um, so yeah, he said, I, I remember I, back in the days I used to just scratch things, just sound like scrambled days. He said, no, 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 no. Pretend you're reading a book and you turn the page and you, and you read, read from the book. And so it's like, Hmm, the dog goes to the park. So you kind of got to chill, right? And, and you kind of got to slow, like you're reading a book. So you're, yeah. you're scratching. is like, it's like, you're telling a story. So it's like, Simple bop, dip, dip, dip. Come on, my hip, dip, dip. So, you know, you're telling a story like that. Like, it's, it's yeah. like, kind of like an alien language, but people get it still because it's like yeah. there's, there's a, a flow and a rhythm to it where you're speaking rather than shooting at everyone with a machine gun with techniques. You know, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. have that machine gun with techniques, but maybe do it uh, 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 classy in, in certain areas. Oh, classy! It's uh, it's John Coltrane. It's Miles Davis. It's yes, it's, yes, it's yes. The They're all telling story. stories. They're all. It's all musical stories. Absolutely. They're speaking with a certain rhythm where there's like these pauses. Yeah, yeah. I and feel then back in the flow. That's fire. Uh, I when I was a kid, I was like into my metal and stuff, and um, I remember I bought this album by Steve Vai, the guitarist Steve Vai, right? Woo! Yeah, I love Steve Vai, bro. Good shit. Dude, changed my whole thought process on like, and that's kind of what got me more into John Coltrane and Miles Davis and the jazz thing because when he did, when Steve Vai did that album, he was going through, and I never thought a whole guitar album would work. And I was like, yo, that, and then, you, you know, you see him live and then it's just like quadrupled in like stature. You're like, wow, he can actually do that shit live as well. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. You know what's up, man. I'm glad you said that because that, those are, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, um, all those guys, Ingve Malmsteen, the way they play is like, that's all translated into, into the art. For real. Uh, you know, 
those actually there is a, that is a real cool similarity what you said it earlier about guitarists and i'm um, often like i said this to noise the other day i was like yo you know the patterns that djs use as a lead as a lead instrument over top of a uh, over top of a record or a beat actually they they're doing drum patterns but with the guitarist guys you guys actually have more of a an influence from that world because of the lead because of the lead guitar kind of movement so it kind of merges both worlds together doesn't it yeah big time it's like uh, 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 with scratching too you have your um you have your technical side but then you have the musical side to it too and and, and you're also trying to sing like with the scratch some people are aware that yeah you can make all these patterns but some people are aware of also making it sing you know as you're speaking yeah yeah it's a, like a melodic mel- melody mixed with technicality yeah yeah Oh, it's just, it's, it's so deep. I love a good techers. Um, when you're, when you're, um, when you're with someone like Cool Keith and, or DJ Shadow and you're, you're asked to do something. I remember seeing um, Eddie Van Halen talking about his, his contribution to beat it. And, you know, he just rocked in there. Didn't, has never got paid for it. You know, he's like, yeah, it's Quincy. I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to do it. And apparently it took him like two takes and he was out. Woo. Oh, yeah, fire, right? So <laughs> how was it with you uh, for the Dr. Octagon album, for instance? You know, some of the tracks were like, um, they took they took a while. Like, oh, let me do that over. Let me, let me try that again. Uh, let me do another take, please. And then some tracks like, oh, keep that. Keep that first one. So it's, 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 it's different. Like I said, there's, you got your good days and bad days. Sometimes I'll come in on a good day and I'll be like flowing. Another day I'll be like, oh man, take yeah. one million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you look for in those situations? Because, you know, we all, we all know the truth is after like maybe the second take, we're going down the wormhole of hell, aren't we? <laughs> um, there's a guy, um, uh, um, Thelonious Monk, he said one or two takes, but the third one, Mm, I don't know. Just leave it. Just use one, the first or second because that that feeling is there. Yeah, it's true. It's the energy that it's the energy that I feel like often is missed in music now. And I, I don't I don't mean to like dog anything or, or go a little bit cynical or, or old even. But um, I love it. I love it when new bands they or new acts really go the distance and take the risk and make something literally like no that's what it, that's how i did it that's how it's staying yeah i mean it, it could be really easy to go and grab the the chopper and start cutting it up and able to do but i like it when people just leave it raw oh i love it raw that's why it's like it's that jazz mentality like you just gotta do it like that first take you if you if you're on tv or someone's filming you mm. it's that first take so you gotta practice your ass off to be to get to that level yeah, and, and in theory, that should make you want to do it again and again and again. It's like doing a skate trick, isn't it? It's like just because you've got it down once, you kind of want to just do it again just to make it a little bit different. And then, you, then you've got the addiction that kicks in of wanting to do it more. Yeah, it's never ending, man. It's never ending. Like after that, after you get that, and it's like, okay, you, do, you keep doing it. After like 10,000 times, it's not going to sound the same as that mm. first time. So. Do you ever listen back to like I, I don't know what's it called Zerla Nafenfu Zerla Nafenfu I can't remember the name of the tape but there's fucking loads of them. Do you ever listen oh, back to like those old mix mixes and and listen back and find like a, a, a scratch or something and you're like oh yeah I forgot I did it like that oh, I forgot yeah, that. Some, sometimes that happens sometimes that happens but sometimes I'm like I don't even want to hear those because it's like I'm so like I'm so in a different world and stuff now that uh, that I've, I've I've learned it's like oh god I don't want to see like my old finger paintings now that I'm a a painter now. It's I love weird. that. I love that so much because it's, it just becomes like this, this uh, catalog of, of just cons- constant cookie cut made to order pieces that, you know, at a time of beastie boys at a time of this new world of scratching and, and DMC and worlds combining. And, you know, it, it spawns so much, culture and I, I love the fact that you call you defined it in the same way as you, an, an artist would i love that i mean you're yeah that definitely uh we're all like these weird picasso guys uh, trying to develop our art <laughs> just trying to get by just trying to make it a, a living in it q <clears throat> yeah the, the the better you uh 
make your art, the more karma comes back to you. <clears throat> That's like the future of, um, of money. There's not even going to be money in the future. It's going to be all about karma, helping each other. That's the whole secret. That's, the whole, that's mm. what the universe wants, right? We all have these skills to make the world a better place. And the money in the future is going to be this exchange of energy where it's like you get, you get your stuff from doing good stuff. It just comes back to you. It's like this weird. It's like the universe knows exactly what you deserve. Like we're in this freaking video game of, of God's mind. And it's like, okay, he's been doing all this stuff. He's been giving these people all this stuff. We're going to hook him up with, uh, um, I don't know, nice car. No, I think, you know, and it just, things just work mm -hmm. out like that. It's weird. You don't even need the money. It's like, God's going to take care of you from what you deserve uh, of what you're putting out there with your skills. It's the weirdest I'm thing. I'm a thousand percent in belief of that. I think it's, I think it's karma. I think it comes, I think it comes around at the right time. Yep. That's it. It's, it's, you stay lazy and, 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 and don't do stuff. Like I, sometimes I get in these, these things where I don't do stuff. Everything just falls apart. And then yeah. when I start making stuff to, to, to put out there, it's like, Oh, he's making stuff again. So the universe gives me stuff. Like I'll find, I'll find yeah. somebody or somebody call, Hey, I need you to do this thing. I'm going to give you a X amount of money for, for this. And that. I'm like, Whoa, that came out of nowhere. And it's because I was going towards that goal of making something for people. And then when you finally get it out there, especially when you get it out there, all this good stuff happens. Like, Oh, I need, I want to sponsor you. I want to do this and that blah, blah, blah. So it's like, um, yeah, it's like you almost the future of money is notoriety, right? So it's like the more right. the more people. I, know I, about I, I, I'm a firm believer. I mean, I've never, I, I you know, I, I running the risk of saying this publicly, I've never really determined anything based on how much money I got in my pocket. It's never been me, man. Maybe to my yeah. own detriment at times where I'm like, yo, the tides come in, you know, what I mean, my time in the sun isn't there. So, what, how am I? grossing anything and what's going on i've got to go back to the lab you know yes yes that's so all you can there. do right yeah go back to the lab there's a million things especially you you're a famous beatboxer you could talk about the patterns you could talk about all the rhythms you do and and then you yeah. can put it on, on on vinyl you can make a kid's book with beatbox man there's a million gazillion things you could do with beatboxing jesus Christ. crazy um, and yeah uh -huh. you just got to utilize your day right you just got to make it happen <clears throat> Um, so on that happy. note, because I, I was going down this road before I, I, I sidetracked into something else. Uh, tell me, tell me an, an average day for Cuba starting from when you wake. What's, what's, your, what's your day? Okay. First thing I do as soon as I wake up, I'll fix the bed so that the bed looks nice, so the room looks nice. So it's like, yes, everything's all straightened out. Because, you know, we live in this, like, like I said, God's video game. <clears throat> it's like the Matrix, right? That everything's all... <clears throat> geometrical so you get when your bed's fixed it's all geometrical it's like all right everything's all clean fire okay then my my stomach is the flattest in the morning because i you know after if you if you uh fast during the night uh what do you call it intermittent fasting your that's stomach's right. the flat but that's when you do I your haven't eaten today i'm exactly the same bro i haven't eaten today yet <clears throat> yeah so that then i I do like maybe 150 sit-ups at the minimum and then i'll um i'll uh i'll uh whatever you know, brush my teeth, wash the face, uh -huh. get, get, get dressed up. And I'll, I'll go do my, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll do the hike. I'll go walk the dog nice. 10 minutes forward, 10 minutes back or bike ride for 20 minutes minimum. Or right. Take a swim. And then, uh, what else is there? Then I'll, then I'll, uh, I'll go get my little groceries. I'll, I'll get a matcha, a matcha green tea. Cause that's like the, uh, a really good, uh, uh, like a go getter kind of drink. I put a little honey in there. I, know no the one. I think Zach Wilde drinks that shit too. Ooh, yes. I love matcha, like a top of the line. And yeah. then, um, and then, cause, um, my, my brother said, if you drink, uh, coffee, uh, it can age you, but if you drink organic coffee, it won't age you. So I'm like, okay, so <laughs> matcha or organic coffee, I'll drink that. And then I'll, I'll get into my little zone. I'll make a beat or something. And I'll practice that beat on scratch, do a little recording. And then uh, I'll look at the albums and look at my my chart. I got a little chart up and stuff. And like, oh, this, this song needs to go there. I need to fix yeah. this. I look at my little notes. And then I, I, yeah. I, I like when I'm scratching, I'm looking at all these, looking at, I'm making like these little notes when I'm scratching. Oh, like, oh this, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, the yeah, combo yeah. I need to work on. And so I've got exactly the same thing, bro. Exactly, I know exactly where you're at. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're scientists in in the freaking lab and stuff. Could you hold on one second? Could you turn that camera around because I can see the octagon? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Let's see this shit. See, this is the original shit, baby. We're live and direct in the... Yeah. 
We are in the nerve center right here, man. That's my yes. shit. My little robots. Look at this. No games. <laughs> No yeah. games here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Killer Killer Podcast giving you the insights. You know what I mean? This is MTV Crips business right here. It's like a bunch of toys. You know? it's like, yeah. You How much do you... Yo, that's fire. Oh, shit, that's sick. This is one studio. Let's, let's, let's check out the other studio. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if the wife can the handle studio. this. Shout out to you my boy, studios, Egyptian huh? Lover. Uh, three. Three studios. Yes. Oh, this wow. is Has anybody ever seen that right there? Oh yeah, dude. Oh shit, he didn't. That's my uh that's my album over there. Uh one of oh, my Oh my god, they got original my, prints in this motherfucker. Come on. This is my uh one of my labs here. Oh shit. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. looking I down because love... the screen's down here. I'm just looking at yeah. it. I'm just in awe. That's my one of my favorite drum machines right here. S950. Of course, bro, that's a, a, a must have for Control any boy. This right here is my shit right here. That's the SP shit right there. It's the limited edition right here. <gasps> uh, what is this? Oh, this is my one of my favorite drum machines, Lin 9000 right here. Oh my God. You, uh, you ever heard of uh, Portishead? If you want yeah, to have your beat sound raw like Portishead, you got to get one of these. I'm dying here, bro. You're killing me right now. Do, oh, do, do people have you ever heard of them? Gonna... Um, Dr. Octagon's first album was all made on this. <gasps> Studio 44. You ever heard of Mantronics? That's that shit. Of course. Right Mantronics. Oh, so Mantronics used that too? Yeah, that's that was the secret weapon right there. Oh my you know god. Doom, 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 doom. Oh my god. This is a, this is this is a, a lesson. This is a fucking lesson, bro. What else is it? Oh, this is right here. That's a it's time or um, oh. ah, this stuff is really fresh. That's the vocal right no there. No fucking way. So you got the machine. Not only do you, not only do you have a record, but you got the machine. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta have the actual equipment, or it's not gonna sound right. Yeah, for real. Yeah, Unbelievable. Man. So that's that's Studio Two, right? Yeah. We, uh, you want to see the the third studio? Oh, we have to. We have to be yeah, really, okay. Oh shit! Gonna, You've got original prints of all you, of your stuff. I gotta take you downstairs, okay? Come on. Okay, okay. Is the Wi-Fi gonna be okay? I like going to try. Yes, you should go. Uh, got this drum machine right here. So you know this uh, oh, emulator wow, too. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me take you down there. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is like I think it's my favorite podcast I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> This is the nerd stuff right here. Let's see. We are officially geeking out, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are just joining us right now, we are live in Cubit's uh, third studio. I, I got to make sure my, my bed's fixed in the morning. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here, right? Right. Okay, let's see what you got here. All right, let's see if you can even see this stuff. I'm not sure if you can see it. Here we go. Jeez. Yo. Let's turn some stuff on here. This is a... MPC 3000. I love this guy right here. With oh, the mate, side. Uh, yeah, staple. A staple in anybody's studio. Must be. And this right here is a uh, Moog. Moog synthesizers, all gold. Gold Look Moog. That shit. Like, you know, Prime Cuts is about to lose his shit when he sees this. When he oh, Prime Cuts, that's the man right there. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he loves this stuff. Look at that. What else is there? Uh, oh, yeah, I got another set of turntables, wood, wooden turntables. Wow, and, wow, um, wow, wow. EPS 16 plus, you gotta have that. Of course. Damn, bro. Oh, here's the here's the, the portable turntable I take out doors. You gotta these guys are here. Reloop. Oh reloop, reloop. yeah, hold tight reloop. You gotta get this portable turntable. It is the best thing ever. It's funny, isn't it? Like you can have all the studios and all the gear, but as soon as that little thing comes out, you'll be on it for hours, right? <laughs> oh, it's fun, it's fun, yeah. yeah I just go real. back. Go back to the yeah, other land. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, there is a, a rupturous round of applause that's going on in the internet land for, for sharing <laughs> around the quick bro. <laughs> that's the sickest shit ever. Ladies uh -huh. and gentlemen, what are you saying on that? So we're just going to get back to the octagon. Back to the octagon. Yes. Uh, making an entry. <laughs> oh, so, uh, I mean, where to begin from all of that? Um, 
That's the original QFO right there. The, uh, I was the just prototype. going to say this. The prototype. Look out. Look at that thing. It's old. This is a white version. Wow. Shout out to my boy Nomi. Wow. Let's see here. We got the... Uh, oh, got shit. He did. Robot. Oh, silver. Oh, of course. This is when I... When I used to compete in the DMC gold turntable. Come on. Yeah, fuck like, yeah. Like gold. I love gold. You love the gold. You know what? You've got so many, that, like so much stuff has been made for you because you're a Don. Like, th th does it ever get tiring? You ever say to yourself, wow, I've got another thing that's, that's got my name on it. <laughs> that's weird, huh? It's crazy. Anyway. So that's the octagon there. Yeah, man, that's where the that's where the magic happens. And here's a little uh, alien fetus in there. Well, what is it? It's an uh, an alien fetus. Oh come on, let's see. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's that's so sick. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the wall spot, box. man. Wall what? Box. I love wall wall box. Yeah, yeah, boy. It just brings back the, the childhood uh, energy and, and then a child being a child is like a, the creative energy. And so that's yeah. also what makes me creative. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Like I know, I know people that, that have in the studio, they have Cartoon Network going on in the studio. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because they know that, oh, you know, Ren and Stimpy's on like we're going to get busy. You know, we have the music. It's on mute, but we're making yeah. the music and you see the cartoons and you're like, you get energized. Yes, 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 yes. So you can't lose that, that childlike energy or else then yeah. the, the yeah, creative sucks. energy spark is gone or whatever. I don't know. Oh, oh. One, la one last thing. Look at this. <laughs> okay, this good. Is a, a limited edition MPC 3000. Wow. Wow. So that's our photon fader right there. You can oh make a... Oh, my um, God. Yeah, yeah. Fire, fire. You can uh, uh, use any portable and you can scratch digital with any portable now. That's the for a long time ago. I made a movie called Wave Twisters. The first time, yeah, you go. Movie. That's exactly what I was now, talking about. Wave yeah. Twisters Zero is almost upon us. Yeah. Shot to Bua. This is an original James Brown drawing from Justin Bua. Wow, if you look close, you can see the paper is a little bit wrinkled because it's just a sketch. But isn't that a great sketch of James Brown? That's beautiful. I mean, you wouldn't, it doesn't even look like a sketch from the screen, bro. It looks like proper, yeah, it's huge too. It's like, that's big. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, this is... Uh, Who's a, who, who comes through most days in the Octagon? Who comes through most of the most of the time? Uh, the, the closest guy that lives here now is uh, DJ Shortcut. Hold because, tight, Shortcut. Uh, yeah, because uh, Apollo also lives here. Mixmaster Mike lives in LA and D-Styles lives in Las Vegas. And... Yoga Frog lives here too, so he lives close by. He comes out here, but yeah, because of this COVID stuff, it's like I've been uh, I've been just working on the album solo right now. Yeah, I mean, you've got enough gear to make an album. You got enough. I mean, I had no idea. I, you know, it, it, it sounds arrogant for me to say, oh, but yeah. you know, you just don't realize how deep you go. You know, when when it comes to making records as 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 a creative, I guess you just put as much effort in on all fronts, right? Yeah, I, I I make beats like crazy. I love making beats. And what I do is I record the beats and then I'll scratch them. This is the secret weapon right here, ASR-10. Oh, yeah. This too is like um, this. Oh, my God. Mantronics use this too. Prophet 2000. You put like a, um, a amp, like a, one of those stabs. Yeah, and you go, yeah. da, 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 da. It sounds crazy. It's all, uh, there's, there's a song called Detonator. And I do the, the head notes on there. Da, da, da. Sound like Mantronic. Da, 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 da crazy yeah so, bro like, so you really go in into the history of like how how do you deconstruct how things were uh, made song wise yeah right? but it's like how the hell did they make that sound i'm like and then when I, you get the gear that they make because uh I, I got lucky um there's uh back then craigslist uh was just coming out in ebay and none of this stuff was expensive at that time. This this stuff is expensive now, but back then it was like, oh, 50 bucks, I'll sell it to you. I don't, I don't even know what it is. So I, I yeah, searched yeah, yeah, for these yeah. things. And then when you sample through them, you're like, oh, I get it. That's why they sound like that because it's 
it's almost like cheating. You put the sound through here and it just comes out freaking like magic. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. that's how they made the sound. Like, or like, a, who's this now? A Gangstar, their first two two albums, uh, three albums, it just sounds mm-hmm. so raw. Now, how that, why does it sound, the texture sounds so good? Yeah. And it's that uh, S950 over there. So they got, they got a little green. lot of secrets. I've been yeah, right. digging deep into that shit. Because you got the sample, first of all, you got the equipment, then you got the sample they're using, which is also affected, and then you've got the studio in which they're making the beats. There's all this kind of like it's like a funnel of of luck. It's it's a it's a uh, what do you call it? like you said, it's a formula. It's like a uh, yeah, you, you get into, into that world and then and then it's like, oh, that unlocked this secret and that unlocked this secret. It's like, man, that's that's a fun little uh rabbit hole of of music making when you get into uh, equipment and plus we get to since we're DJs we get to scratch all that stuff so there's another element of it and so yeah. it's beautiful yeah and I guess it goes back to our original conversation which is you know if, if you play and you practice and you just keep on you know knocking on those doors and unlocking the keys and the keys and having these opportunities to find new ways inevitably you you find these golden moments that could never be replicated. I mean, it's, it's the same with hunting for records. You're going to be like, oh, that sucked. That record sucked. And then you buy all these records. And that's and it's like, oh, shit, I found a gem. It's just, we're just hunting for little, little diamonds, little, little yeah. emeralds and stuff. So it's like, it's all about trial and error. And that's what life is. It's, it's this whole, you're digging through life. Everything's going to be fucked up. But once in a while, you're going to get these gems. And that, those are the ones you die for. Like, yes, I got the little... I got the collection of gems, you know, after like 10 or five junky things, you're going to find that, that, that Ruby. You can so tell. Keep, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. You, um, I can't remember to what exact words, um, Mike Tyson, um, explained the definition of a good box. So it was a documentary that he'd done. It's the big notorious documentary. He said something along the lines of, you know, uh, a, a, a great boxer is a happy boxer. You know I mean? <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I think when I'm scratching, I see these guys all. Yeah. Scratching, it's almost like we make fun of them. Like, dude, that's fun, man. Relax. Dude, that's when, that's when the, the beauty comes out when you're, when you're having fun and shit. Yeah. Like have fun with it. And brother, you're an inspiration. You, you seem even now, apart from constantly looking like, on some Peter Pan drugs where you just don't age. You also are still happy. You're still doing your thing. And it's a pleasure to know you, brother. It really is. You too, bro. I, I've learned so much from you and the way your style is and the way you beatbox, man. You just don't know. I, I've, I've, uh, I went down a lot of videos on the internet looking at you and like, mm, I'm going to try that pattern out. I've, I've learned a lot from you, bro. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It means the world to me, brother. Thank you so much. It, you know, it's reciprocated. You, May we continue and, to, and, and, Keep creative and keep uh, open minds to all sorts of technology and more, eh? That's what we do. That's what we do. Even the old technology. <laughs> yeah. I mixed yeah. it. I, I got the old, the, the old shit. I got the old shit and the new shit. I exactly. like combining everything. Ooh, working at the same time in tandem, brother. That's right. Yeah. Use it all, man. It all sounds good. You know, those are gems too. The old stuff is, is rubies and you got your... Emeralds and the new and old stuff too. It's all good. My G. Ladies and gentlemen, Q. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> oh shit. Man, that's a secret weapon right there. MPC sixty. You, you guys, you guys, if you guys don't have this equipment, hunt for that shit. You are it's gonna change your life. I swear. It's like oof. This shit, look, everything that's coming out is just looks supreme, bro. It looks like it's like straight off the factory floor. Have you had them renovate it? You had them rebuilt or anything and sometimes i do that this is a guy called forat in in los angeles uh, you send him your equipment and he'll he'll soup it up and there's a there's a place in the uk that uh, they fix that's rz1 right. drum machines in too, south so. yeah Woo! yeah so, you've got to get man. it done right you've got to get it done course if you don't it's like an old car that doesn't a vintage car that just doesn't get the the, the juice it needs oh man that's 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 the goal i, I love i love um making my stuff uh like, like there's this guy, Jesse Dean, uh, in, in LA and he'll, you send him your mixer or whatever. He'll put wood sides on it and he'll make it. It's like he, he even dresses the shop that they dress at, that they work on the mixers. They dress like they're at a car shop, you know, the, um, 
Oh, their outfits. It's, it's, so it's hilarious. Serious. Yeah. I want to <laughs> give, I give, uh, I wanna give Reloop a shot. This this is the new shit right here. There's a, a thing back in the day called the, uh, the uh, controller one where you can play musical notes on the um, on the turntable. Like it oh, controls yeah. the speed of the turntable. Doo, 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 doo. So that's their new turntable right here. I got to give them a shot. Oh my God, that is Reloop. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't have this available, but this is the secret weapon right here for if you want to play musical notes on your turntable. If you can't get a controller one, because the controller ones are all sold out. Shout out to D Styles and Ricky Rucker. And Tico. you know, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, people that are watching this podcast right now in absolute. They're they're buckled down in blind f- disbelief that yeah, that this is really happening. <laughs> buckled down, bent over in agony, thinking to themselves, "Jesus Christ, I want to be around a fucking Q's place right now." <laughs> Hey, you're, you're, you know, this is it. Virtual reality. This is, this is it. You guys are with me. It's all good. We're doing yeah, it. That's so true. That's so true. Um, how, how many hours a day do you scratch? Do you practice scratching? Ooh, uh, uh, minimum, minimum, minimum two hours or two, mm-hmm. one hour or two hours. But yeah. I yeah, got to yeah. get that. If I don't, it's like everything kind of just, uh, it like stagnates. Like if I don't practice for one day, it kind of goes back three days. So I kind of just got to throw it in there. But then if I'm flowing, if I'm having a good time, I'll practice the whole the whole day. Do you think there is an, an like a an OCD uh, to to the way you're? Yeah, that's fire! Oh my god! Yeah, that's fire! Fuck! You know what that is, huh? Yeah, yeah, of course. Shout to my man, Dude. Um, Lou. There is a there is an OCD to this, right? I mean. You, you, the way you explain things is, is this is this is in practice. This is a daily, like operational thing. You miss something and it doesn't quite fit right to your your day, right? Yeah, you kind of just gotta like do it. You know, you gotta be a man. Like, man, let's just let's go. Let's do it. We gotta get that training in. And then yeah. sometimes you, know, you gotta you gotta rest too. You gotta balance it out. But yeah. too much of one thing is not good. Like if you practice too much, you could hurt yourself or injure yourself, or you could just like kind of can go crazy, or else. It, you know, yeah, you can right. um, you can mess up something and you won't ever be able to scratch or, or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's the same with beatbox, right? You can mess up your lips if you keep on just go yeah. 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Oh, you know it. If <laughs> you, you haven't gotta... beatbox enough for ages, you know it. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's that balance. Uh, uh, what, what did uh, Buddha, Buddha say? I'm not a Buddhist, but there's a saying that Buddha said. He said, um, uh, uh, if you have the guitar string, if you, if you do it too tight, it'll break. If you do it too slack, it won't play. So you have to get it right in the middle, just right. And it's like, that's what life does. That balance up and down, up and down. It's like balance. Always yeah, the freaking fire. balance of nature and shit. I love it. That is such a good analogy as well, because, because you know, that's, that's actually, that's life, isn't it? That's what life is. It is. It's, it? that, it's that balance. There's the freaking, there's the, the, the animals that kill the other animals. And there's the guys that got to get eaten. It's all, it's all perfectly balanced. It's just right. That's right. It's all, it's all in keeping and it's all perfect the way yeah, it's like the moon right the fucking moon is like uh the earth is like this mud ball right but the moon they fucking put the moon right there and to keep the earth balanced yeah you know, it's like fucking training wheels for the earth yeah 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 it's true it's true yeah, it's true it keeps it all just just right that's right so so talking of talking of the the the, the, the world and the moon and when when do you reckon when do you, when have you got penciled your next gigs when when are they likely to happen they said 2021 i'm like god damn so it's like okay well then this is the downtime this whole shit is the downtime if you guys ain't training right now if you guys are not creating something something's wrong with your ass you got to get yeah, in the lab real. this is lab time this is awesome i just finished the freaking album i'm about to work on album number fucking the next one after that after That's i get done with that. this is it's it downtime. there's other things to do in these fucking you think it's a negative time but it's not man this is the shit always turn that fucking Negative, like the media, the media wants you to be sad. The media wants you to be in that negative world. Hell no, you take that shit and you turn it into something positive. Thousand percent. I couldn't agree with you more. Just keep your head down and get on with what you're doing and ignore everything else and use the time wisely. I love it, man. Shit. I fucking yeah. love it. I, I fucking, I, I got a gang of practicing. I got a lot of freaking productivity out there. Oh my God. I'm, thank you for this, this yeah. downtime, whatever you guys think it's a negative. Hell no, this is awesome. This is the one. This is the best. And, f- and we are here talking, which would never have happened if we was all out gallivanting, trying to do our thing, right? It's a freaking positive. I, everyone, wake the hell up, man. This is beautiful. It's like all, all these 
uh, negative people in, in the media, in the government, in the media are getting exposed right now. It's like we're coming to this beautiful time. All these, yeah. all these freaking vampires in 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 the industry are getting um, deleted. Man, this is like yeah. God's beautiful world is coming into all this free energy and. Uh, you don't have to pay for why the hell are we pay for water? Why are we pay for energy when it's supposed to be free? That guy Tesla made um, free energy back in the early what late 1800s, That's early right. 1900s, and then the what is um, Edison? They they said nah, they can't make money off this. So f you. Yeah. But now it's all coming out. All this stuff, man, it's, it's dope. I love it. It's a good time to be alive, isn't it, Q? This, this is the transition right here. This is 2020 it means you can see now. We can all see what's what's happening with the. The light is the end of the tunnel is right there. It's like the fucking birthing canal. You got to go through the pain of the birth. But after that birth, it's like a miracle is about to happen. Yeah, I it's, love it's that amazing. analogy. Woo, yeah, you said it. I love that analogy. That's fire. You know what's up. Well, my brother, I'm going to love you and leave you. But love thank you, brother. you so Take much care, for taking us around a tour of your your uh, your your hood, your, your yard. You too, bro. I love the, look, the graffiti right there. Hell yeah, that's the shit, man. Gotta have that. I love oh, that. Look yeah, at that. Bro, yeah, that's that's my boy Causa from DDS. Ooh, yeah, man. That's, that's hard, bro. I love graffiti. Hell yes. Yeah. Shout out to Doug, the one that did my um album. He's he's working on the album cover right now. So oh fine. So Listen, yeah. keeping them cultures moving, man. Keeping the culture locked. It's beautiful, man. The culture just keeps blossoming, man. It's gonna be something really incredible. All all those B girls and, and B boys that have been practicing in this time, man. It's just gonna when that whole 20 2021 happens it's going to be like some wild ass beautiful art coming up that's what i'm so saying work on your so shit everybody <laughs> q man thank you so much for joining us to kill a cat podcast you are an absolute legend and a star we love you over right. here all right love you guys god is with you all one love blessings to everybody that's the one. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, q but Well, like him was out of fashion. Don't forget to share and subscribe, all right? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Peace.